Welcome to Devon and Cornwall. In this series, I'll be taking you along with me on my adventures in this enchanting and often remote corner of the UK. I'll discover its culture and heritage, explore its beauty from plants to coastlines, countryside ambles and picturesque seaside villages. I'll be getting out of the car as much as possible to make the most of my own two feet, rented two wheels, quirky open top buses, stunning train rides, jet skis, and show my parents that those swimming lessons as a kid weren't all for nothing. There'll be plenty of local foods and a handful of quirky Airbnb properties to tour. To kick off the series, I'll be visiting the Riverford Field Kitchen on the edge of Dartmoor National Park. If during this video you find yourself enjoying it, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel so that you can join me in my Devon and Cornwall adventures. To kickstart our two week trip in the southwest of England, we're coming along to the Riverford Field Kitchen in Devon. We've been really fortunate. I tried to book this place many, many months in advance and unfortunately they were completely sold out. But last week they reached out to me to let me know that they had a cancellation and so we've managed to get a lunchtime reservation. Ahead of actually going into the restaurant, we have been welcomed to have a wander around the farm and inside the tunnels where they're growing lots of the vegetables. So we're just having a wander and starting to get a bit of an idea as to maybe what we potentially are going to be eating at lunchtime today. The exterior and interior of the restaurant were both very impressive and I especially liked the brightly coloured dried flowers hung on the wall, the huge blackboard letting us know what was happening at the farm at that time, and the slight tease from the corn on the cob making me want to book again for an autumnal feast. The food was served family style and out first was the tangy, freshly baked sourdough with deliciously salty butter and a separate plate with crunchy peppery radishes drizzled in a creamy Lovage vinaigrette. Shortly after, a plate with fresh and certainly not pickled beetroot arrived, a vegetable I'm not usually fond of but when accompanied with the pickled cherries that still had a slight sweetness to them, walnuts to counterbalance the juice levels and rocket to add a peppery kick it was a dish that I loved and devoured. A further three plates arrived in quick succession of one another. The tender and succulent salsa verde chicken, cooked to perfection, though truthfully I've never been a big fan of salsa verde. The courgette, basil, pine nuts and mint dish was divine as the courgettes had been cut chunky style and cooked au dente, something I've never tried before but have had success with after eating here. The third dish was the tangy yet sweet panzanella salad with some of the freshest tomatoes I've had the joy of eating. The final dish before dessert was the potatoes roasted to perfection, drizzled in a creamy ajo blanco with watercress. For dessert, I chose a decadent chocolate nemesis that came with punchy amaretto plums. After a fantastic lunch that definitely led up to expectations and potentially actually did a little bit better, some of the reviews that I'd read online talked about how the meats weren't quite as good as the vegetables, but based on our experience today, the chicken that we were served was amazing. We've perhaps eaten a little bit more than what we normally would for a lunch, so we've decided to go on a one and a half-ish hour walk around the farm and the staff 
in the restaurant have very helpfully given us one of these maps that we're able to follow around the site and it's just going to help us not get lost and also perhaps give us some information as well about the farm and what's going on with it and what sorts of things that they are doing to help with the environment. Riverford's Devon Farm has about 500 acres of growing space but following the organic principle of allowing fields to rest to be able to protect the quality of the soil I'm assuming that the field that we're walking in at the moment because it only consists of grass and things like clovers it must just be lying to rest at the moment because there's certainly no fruit or vegetables growing in it. On the back of the map that we've been given there's quite a few fun facts and one of the things that it talks about is that on an organic farm, which Riverford obviously is, there's up to 50% more biodiversity so you'll see a lot more insects and birds and plants and if this tiny section around this reservoir is anything to go by it's very easy to believe. So far I've seen things such as damselflies, butterflies, ladybirds or ladybugs, never really sure what is the correct name for that. What do you guys call it? Tell me in the comments below. We've also seen frogs and loads and loads of bumblebees and they've just been loving the flowers and the water down in the reservoir as well and yeah I guess in comparison to conventional farming if it's giving a home to all of these guys it's great. The trails loop me back to close where we parked the car and had our lunch and we've come across these beehives. Again, the information that we're being told on the back of the site map is letting us know that these bees aren't kept for their honey and instead they're used to help pollinate all of the plants and obviously from the flowers using the nectar. I've only just learnt reading this that honeybees don't actually hibernate during the winter and instead they curl up into a ball to keep themselves warm and then they eat their own honey as sustenance. I've been informed that the commercial style of farming, the farmers actually sell all of the honeybees honey and instead will feed the bees water and sugar during the winter to keep them alive. Whereas obviously here, because they aren't collecting the honey, it means that these bees actually get to eat their own honey during the winter months instead. Holly Tunnel was constructed in 2015 and their head gardener who's called Penny at the moment is always experimenting with things and growing quite unusual fruits and vegetables for example cucumelons is what is mentioned on here. Riverford is particularly if you're based in the UK you might be familiar with the name because they do the veg boxes that can be delivered to your homes and apparently sometimes some of the experiments that Penny dapples in from this this polytunnel can end up in those vegetable boxes but just wandering around it seems like there's some really strange and unusual things or just really large size things that yeah I've never seen before certainly definitely not in supermarkets it's quite cool what's going on inside of this tunnel
and the final stop on our map is back where we started at the restaurant and fun fact from the back is that there are solar panels all across the top of the roof which gives the restaurant enough electricity for all of their electrical items and then the heat that comes off of the fridges is used as underfloor heating within the restaurant. The other really nice thing is we've learned that all of the staff who were serving us and obviously making the food for us are actually co-owners here at Riverford. And I think that's pretty much everything that we wanted to explore here. So I think we're gonna head back to the car and back to our accommodation now.